Okay, so this video is Power Places and Networks, Foreign Direct Investment and Outsourcing oops, by Transnational Corporations and ways in which this networks places and markets and also a case study. So foreign direct investment is investment by a company into the structures, equipment or organizations of a foreign country, not including shares. After the 2008 crisis, FDI improved by 2015 due to the um, investment by HIC countries. It slowed in Latin America except for Cuba, Africa and Caribbean due to low commodity prices, geopolitical tensions and sanctions and there has been a lot more manufacturing investment globally um, as like a global trend over the past decades. Outsourcing is basically obtaining key products from alternative cheaper locations often abroad than home sources and then offshoring is moving parts of production to another country um, through sub subcontracting. So reasons for outsourcing is that it improves choice for consumers, it reduces risk, it focuses on the core, allows you to focus on the core business like in the headquarter place um, and you have your production elsewhere. It can reduce your cost of production, it, you can avoid paying health insurance, pension contributions, there's possibility of better quality of service, access to outside expertise and you can avoid training costs. The criteria is to, you need to have criteria. Oh, criteria for like a place that you would outsource to. They need to have twenty-four hour services, telephone connections, IT skills, high intre, high internet speed and capacity, English language skills, and awareness of cultural and customs in cultural like norms and customs in the recipient countries of the like production process transnational comp companies so this is an organization that operates in a large number of countries um the res research and development and decision making is usually in hic's and assembly and production usually occurs in lic's and mic nic's so newly um nic's nic's what the heck I can't think of what NIC is. Oh, newly industrialized country. Okay. Um, one third of trade globally is made up of internal transfers by TNCs and over 50 million people are employed by TNCs. They use these survival strategies, diversification, rationalization through a smaller workforce, labor stabilization, mechanization, administration and marketing, and also subcontracting. Um, and like the processes of outsourcing, offshoring as well. So let's do a quick evaluation of a TNC. So the pros of TNCs are that they, wait a minute. Oh, okay, never mind. They there's capital equipment provision, energy resource development, employment investment and aid, resource and manufacturing development, and improvement in educational and technical skills of the workforce. Cons is that manufactured product product prices have risen. Fewer skilled workers might be. There might be fewer skilled workers in general, um, reduced labor demand, exploitation of local resources and laborers, most profits go overseas and more imports can lead to debt. Um, and kind of about the skilled workers, it's kind of in developing countries where a lot of offshoring takes place. Um, that can lead to like a dependency on the TNCs for employment and pre like prevent the countries the, the developing countries from developing um as they kind of um stay in this like manufacturing sector kind of thing kind of economy okay so more definitions so supply chain is the full range of activities which are required to bring a product slash service from conception through intermediary phases of production delivery to final consumers and final disposal after use a global Strategy is an organization strategic guide to maximizing revenue through effective use of global networking and it essentially creates a competitive global a global competitive advantage. So now onto the case study. So we have IKEA and Tata Motors. So IKEA was founded in Sweden in 1943. One of their um, global strategies is they use globalization or actually that should say globalization. So they adapt their products to the local market essentially where so localization is where you like 
make your products accustomed to the local cultures. So they have kimchi fridges offered in Korea. They have over 200 million copies of the catalogs that are very adapted to each culture. So they have Jewish Orthodox texts, and they are in their food um, offerings. They offer different types of cuisines and such as Indian food, and they adapt to that market. And they also offer certain religions like no pork or different kind of adaptations towards the cultures in whatever nation they are in um they also have a global strategy towards sustainability and corporate corporate social responsibility so 97 percent of their wood is sustainably produced sources they source their wood from 50 plus countries such as norway poland and russia they also have had sustainable cotton farming practices since 2015 and kind of provided fair conditions for their workers and farmers. On the other hand, Tata Motors was founded in 1868 in India, but also IKEA was initially like a stationary store and then it developed into this huge international TNC. Okay, anyway, so Tata was founded in 1868 in India and it as a global strategy it uses global acquisitions so it has um through global acquisitions it has um, kind of taking control of Jaguar and Land Rover in 2008, Tetley T of the UK in 2000. They also do a lot of diversification of their products, so they offer telecom, technology, foods and engineering services, and a lot more. Um, they have also vehicles, and just they have a huge market that's hugely diversified. Joint ventures such as with PepsiCo in 2010, as well as Singapore Airlines too.